just cross over live where a senior political affairs reporter, Kennedy Muraidi, is on standby just to give us a glimpse of the situation there. Muraidi, good evening. And we've seen uh, the key highlights highlighted there by the uh, Azimio One Kenya Coalition presidential uh, candidate. Just uh, tell us more on, on the situation there. How is the mood uh, and what are some of the issues standing up for you? Well, a very good evening to you, Zainab. And as you have rightly said, and even with the panel that you're having in studio, quite a discussion you're having. But one of the key notable things that I have understood, even from Raila's speech, is the quest to have manufacturing entrenched in the country. He measures it as one of the key indicators of his government, going as far as saying that for any person outside this country who would want to come up and set up shop in the country, then they will be considering the quest to have the them get incentives in an effort to grow the economy and also make sure that they expand the number of people who are having jobs here in the country. Well, there are quite a number of things that he has said, including going as far as noting some of the things that he will do in the first 100 days if his government is elected. And I am joined by the Secretary General of the Jubilee Party, who is also an ardent supporter of the Azimio One Kenya Coalition Political Party. Party. And the question of Raila Odinga has gone ahead to say in the first 100 days and noted over 10 points that you would really want to consider and make sure that they are done. Well, we know manifestos, not just in this country, but most of the politicians who make them probably do not live up to them. How sure are we that Raila Odinga will live up to the manifesto that he has given Kenyans today? One of the uh, key things is that um, he has anchored all his promises on three things, dealing with poverty, issues of education, and the health of the nation. And these are issues that uh, really uh, even drove the fight against the colonialism. And these are issues that uh, we must always focus on. The fact that he has anchored his manifesto on those three things, without doubt we know that, um, and knowing his history, he has always fought for the you know, improvement of the lives of Kenyans. We believe and we know that the, their character is not that of promising, but of doing. With Mother Karua on board and all the people who are around them, we expect them that, that they are going to deliver on the issues that they have promised. Remember, we, they come into power when uh, we are faced with the high levels of unemployment in this country. And uh, any, any person who would want to help this country, it is in dealing with an employment levels of our young people. And you can only do that if you grow the economy in terms of um, bringing in manufacturing in the country. And also, of course, uh, in ensuring that uh, people have also a good health. These are three issues uh, that uh, will always drive a useful manifesto. But crucially, he has also undertaken to build on what others have done. So if, even if we don't make huge strides, he is not going to demolish on and do what has already been achieved by the previous government. That way, we are certain that some form of movement, forward movement, will happen. How quickly, again, would depend on the, the, the level of um, commitment and the kind of government that he put in place. But the fact that he has chosen to use the same uh, highway that has been built by, by others, we are certain of some movement into the uh, forward. Including Moshimiwa, Raila Odinga has been very categorical, even going as far as saying that this is not just a manifesto, but it is a covenant between me and the people of Kenya. You being a Christian, you know what happens when a covenant between people is broken. Are you assuring Kenyans that I know that you are in the inner sanctums of decision making? Are you assuring Kenyans that uh, the question of a covenant will be kept? I have known for the whole of my adult life. I have known Laila fighting for the welfare of Kenyans. I do not see him departing from it at the age of 77. He has nothing to gain by moving away from it. He has always fought, fought for an opportunity to improve the lives of Kenyans. And I believe that this is a real covenant that he will strive to deliver together with mother and we will be there to help him. And we are certain, I can assure you, we will certainly have some movement uh, in the areas that he has promised. And uh, again, uh, if it was a question of looking for wealth, he has had his, all these opportunities throughout his life. So I expect that all of us who will be around him 
will be geared to serving Kenyans as opposed to satisfying our personal greeds. Do you believe Raila Odinga in finishing his, scre- in, uh, his speech was very categorical on the question of eradicating corruption in this country? And he has actually said that they will be looking to declare corruption a national threat. Is it possible to eradicate corruption in this country? Corruption has never been eradicated anywhere in the world. It is a question of the zeal with which you come to power and fight corruption. And I believe that uh, the ticket of Lyra and Mother has the best seal that we have seen so far to fight corruption. Remember again, one of the things that has hindered the fight against corruption is talking of political persecution. And uh, these are individuals who have fought corruption even when they were not in power. So there will not be any person who come around crying that it is political persecution. They have fought corruption all through their uh, political careers, and we expect that uh, when they take on it, Kenyans will support them. Because without the support of Kenyans, it is also still very difficult to fight corruption in this country.